Welcome back, everyone. Thanks again uh, for joining us. Appreciate you stopping by. So we're building the lighting for the display tank, and we're starting once again with some inexpensive aluminum angle to make the frame, and then adding a big uh, kind of beefy heat sink down the middle, which will act as kind of the spine for the light rack. And that will house some do-it-yourself LEDs, which admittedly <laughs> is kind of old school, but I have a bunch of drivers left over from previous projects. And in looking at all the lighting I wanted to add, it was actually, ending up being the most cost-effective way to add some adjustable uh, spectrum channels for color rendition and to add some lower wavelength blue and UV, uh, 390 to 420 nanometers. So essentially we're gonna be creating a T5 LED hybrid, which is nothing new. It's gonna be using six Kessel 360s and four uh, 80 watt five foot T5 bulbs then there will be the, about 200 watts of do-it-yourself LEDs down the center on this heatsink. And then I'm also gonna add in some anchor points for future expandability in case I wanna add some additional lights in the future. I'm not quite sure how much par I'm gonna be getting with this setup, so I wanna add in some flexibility in the future. So after making the light frame, I then just spray painted it white, which it is, kind of for corrosion resistance, but really just uh, for style points as well. And here's the finished light rack, which is painted. And you'll see I've got some drawer slides on the outside, and those are actually bi-directional drawer slides, which will allow this entire light rack to be pushed completely out of the way from either direction in the hood. So we've got anchor points for the T5s on either end. And then these bars across the center here and here are for the Kessels as well as the additional anchor points that I added. The strip down the center on this heat sink was where the do-it-yourself LEDs. And this crossbar toward the end is because the light rack is six feet long. Um, that's where actually the uh, T5s are going to be anchored as well. And here are the LEDs. I've got red, lime, and green, uh, UV 390, 410, and 420, cyan and blue, royal blue, and then warm whites. And those will all be on individually adjustable channels. And really what we're going for in a mixed reef is kind of the maximum flexibility in adjusting PAR and spectrum uh, to kind of cater to all different coral types. You'll see that the T5s only go to five feet and the light rack extends, and that's because we're actually gonna be creating kind of a lower light zone at one end of the tank, which is why we used a five foot bulb instead of two three foot bulbs to completely cover the tank. Here are the do-it-yourself LEDs wired up, as well as the T5s added in. A lot of wires. <laughs> and you can see I added the T5s on the underside and then the center T5s I flipped just to kind of get the reflectors out of the way of the LEDs, which have a pretty broad spread because they won't have lenses on them. We'll see if this works. I, you know, it's kind of the lesser of two evils, so. And the LEDs will be sprayed with a clear silicon sealant that makes them completely waterproof. You can actually run the LEDs underwater with this stuff, which is kind of cool. And here's the other side showing the heatsink. And you actually don't want to spray the fins of the heatsink because it can interfere with its thermal properties. And here's a little combiner box. All the wires will go into here once everything is wired up just for keep things tidy. And the T5 retrofit kits are just the LET retrofit kits. And I've always kind of had a love-hate relationship with these. They're the most cost-effective, but the wiring is always so unwieldy. So we'll have to wrangle that a little bit. And to mount the lighting rack, I made this superstructure, which just screws into the ceiling. And it will hold the light rack as well as all the cabinetry. Uh, I actually don't like lighting hoods to rest on the tank itself. And I don't know if that's just me in particular. Uh, the cabinetry will hang from the top and the lids will open um, up like this. So let the electrical mayhem begin. This is the board just for the lighting, including the LED ballasts and power supplies. 
Here's a power strip for the Kessels, uh, the six 360s, and then two slots for two Kessel A80s, which are their kind of small nano lights, which would be for a couple accents. And then we've got uh, seven drivers for the custom LED channels. Each will be uh, individually adjustable and dimmable. We've then got two VDM modules for dimming through the apex, the lunar module, and then two uh, EB4s for controlling everything. And these are the drivers for the six Kessel 360s. And then here are the essentially the wiring points where the light hood itself will be wired into. And this rack will be mounted actually uh, to the ceiling in the fish room. So here is the light rack mounted to the ceiling. <laughs> Obviously have a little bit of wire management to do, but anytime you can get drivers and electronics out of the lighting hood is a benefit because moisture and heat are really what make power supplies and drivers fail sooner uh, than they should. And the way I've mounted these, you'll see is kind of at an angle and that's purposely done because this will be kind of in an open cabinet on the ceiling with the fan constantly going in the fish room will actually blow cool air through these power supplies and try to help to cool them. So, uh, and you'll also notice that all of these power supplies are mounted on end. Some of the commercially available kind of Velcro brackets and stuff, uh, they mount it with the, the bigger flat side down. But if you mount it on edge like this, it's actually more surface area exposed to air to allow for cooling. So this is kind of the better way to, to mount these power supplies. And here you can see everything tidied up with the panel attached and with the fan going and the open sides, uh, hopefully this will keep all these electronics cool. And yes, the plumbing video is coming. So here's the lighting rack installed in the hood. And I can't seem to find the footage of when I first installed it before doing the plumbing, so apologies for that. Some of you might be thinking, why am I using the older Kessel 360 WEs? And that's really just how delayed this project was. I uh, bought all the equipment over about two Black Friday sales over about a year and a half. And I had actually contacted Kessel about six months before buying these saying, hey, do you have any products in the pipeline that I should wait for? And they said, no. And then I bought these and six months later, the 360 X's came out. So I was pretty annoyed at that. I ended up adding two 48 inch Orphix for a little extra blue. So we've got Blue Plus, Kessels, and the Orphix. And then a Coral Plus bulb on each side, as well as the do-it-yourself LEDs in the center. And these are the Orphic light bars. I could have gone with the Reef Brights, but these have lenses on them and have a little bit more punch for a deeper tank. We've got cooling fans for the LEDs and a hood exhaust. And then I also added two Kessel A80s for some highlight on the back of the tank. And we'll get into why I did that in the next video. And also, as I said, this light rack has these bi-directional hinges and I can push this out either direction about 24 inches, which makes working on the lighting rack easier. I don't really anticipate using it all that much though. And I have a little bit more cord wrangling to do. Now we'll go over a par map of the tank and a little bit more in depth into why I've chosen the lighting I have in another video. But we're gonna leave it there for now. Thanks again for joining us and happy reefing everyone. Oh,